Commissioner, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Dan? I'm doing great. Uh, was this a vacation for you? Uh, yeah, I was on the beach. It was great. It really worked out. <laughs> no, actually, we were very, very busy in Cuba. Um, ha- had a full schedule. Uh, did some community events on uh, Monday. Had a big uh, youth clinic that we went to. Hosted a luncheon for members of the congressional delegation. Uh, I, w- I was fortunate enough to go to the state dinner on uh, Monday night. And then, of course, we had the uh, ball game yesterday. What was the baseball purpose of the trip? Well, first of all, we, we were asked to play a role in what I regard to be a historic effort to begin to alter the relationship between the United States and Cuba. And um, I do feel that our sport is at its best when it gets beyond sports. So, you know, we were trying to be cooperative with, with the White House and their objectives. Um, we do have our own business interests in Cuba. Um, it provided us an opportunity uh, to get access to uh, Cuban officials, um, to get access to really important um, officials in our government and to bring focus to the uh, issue of getting reforms that would allow players to move safely uh, between Cuba and the United States in order to play baseball. What kind of interaction did you have with or have you had with uh, Castro? Um, I did not meet um, the president of Cuba at all. Um, we were at the state dinner, but there was not a receiving line, so I did not have a, a, a chance to meet him. Um, I did spend a considerable amount of time with Fidel's son, Tony, who's um, very involved in baseball in Cuba. Um, really a, 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 a wonderful guy who has been helpful to us in terms of trying to work through our, is- our issues. Would you ever consider a franchise in Havana? Um. You, you, you know, would you ever is a pretty Have long-term you? question. Have you thought um, about I, it? I, and, you know, honestly, having been there this week, um, a lot has to happen in Cuba before you would be anywhere near a situation where the economy there could support a major league franchise. I mean, Dan, I, I, you know, we all have read and, you know, seen coverage on TV until you're there in person. I think it's, it's actually a little difficult to appreciate exactly what the situation is. What did you see? Um, I saw um, a, a, a city that has sort of beautiful bones, um, but it is uh, very uh, much in need of repair and refurbishment. Um, y- you know, I, I, the people are absolutely wonderful, Dan. I, I can't say enough about them. They're warm, they're friendly, and, you know, kind of matters to me given my job. They love baseball. Um, but the infrastructure uh, is in need of a tremendous amount of work. He's the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, joining us, Dan Patrick's show. How concerned were you being used by Cuba politically? You know, I, I didn't feel that way, Dan. And, you know, I felt that um, the uh, attention that was paid to what was really a historic event gave us an opportunity uh, to get in front of people our view as to what the relationship um, with Cuba on the baseball-related issues should look like. And so, I, I, you know, we spoke freely. Um, we told people what we really thought, and I didn't feel used at all. Yeah, and I wonder what role baseball could play. You have a, you have a, a country of 11 million, and if you did have one baseball team there, the infrastructure that you have in place now, of course, is, uh, you know, has been criminal. But a decade from now, can you – now, you said short term, no, there's a lot of things that have to be put in play. But how far out do you think these things of, you know, adding an, we, a, another franchise? I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't mean to um, okay. interrupt you there. Um, I, I think that when you said a decade, you're getting closer to the number. Um, I think the potential for that market um, is there, and I see that potential in 
the love of the game that clearly exists uh, uh, among the human uh, the Cuban people. Um, it, it's just uh, amazing to me. You know, people were there hours before this game began. The atmosphere in, in the stadium was fantastic. When you talk to, to, to people about baseball, um, whatever the information flow is, and how whatever limits exist, these people know a lot about what's going on in Major League Baseball. I was concerned about this. I heard it on ESPN this morning that they handpicked who could go watch the game. Uh, also, when highlights or games are played in Cuba, they will edit out the defectors in games. Can you confirm or deny that? Um, the, uh, the, I can't tell you what happens with respect to highlights. I can tell you that the, you know, there's absolutely no question the Cuban government um, controlled the house in terms of who was going to be in the ballpark. That's the way things worked there. Um, it was one of those things that, that um, we accepted um, as a price of trying to make progress on the, the issue that really matters to us, and that is getting players into a position where if they want to play in Major League Baseball, they can come here safely and return to their homeland. Uh, I wanted, while I have you, to talk about Adam LaRoche's situation with his 14-year-old son. Baseball looking into it uh, or get, you know, policy change with having kids in the locker room or uh, you know, flying with the team? Well, you know, we do have a policy about um, kids being actually on the field in ages, um, but this is a little different issue. Um, I am a believer um, in the fact that because of the length of our season and the variation that exists in our markets, there are certain things that you have to leave to the individual clubs to decide, and I think this is one of them. Um, the atmosphere at different clubs in different markets is very different and and uh, i think appropriately this is an area where the clubs should have the right and do have the right to set their own rules also you have one of your star players bryce harper refer to your sport as tired how did you take um, that well i think that particular word um i think was unfortunate um, you know, it happens to all of us when we speak to the press occasionally. I think the, the, the sentiment uh, of Bryce's comments are actually a positive. Um, I think that it's important for e we have a really exciting generation of talented, talented young players coming onto the scene. And I do think that this generation of players is entitled to put their mark on the game um, in the same way that prior generations have. And I, I think that's what Bryce was trying to say. And I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Any problems with bat flips? No, you know what? Players are going to decide what's acceptable inside the white lines. And, and you know, so, sort of like we just talked about with club policies, players should decide that. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, they are the game. It's their game. Um, I know that they will evolve to um, sort of natural limits on what's acceptable and not acceptable, but it's important to point out that those limits do not need to be the same as they were in 1965. How much of your job is to make baseball more entertaining? I think it's a big part of our job. I mean, we, we, we don't think um, of ourselves as just a sports competitor. I think we're realistic, Dan, about the fact that we have to compete in a larger entertainment market, and um, we have to be entertaining um, and acceptable to fans, um, and we need 75 million of them every year to come to the ballpark. Could you ever see computerized balls and strikes? I think there's technology limitations right now. Let's talk right now and long term, okay? okay? Yeah. I think there, there's technology limitations right now, Dan. Um, you, you, you know, the unfortunately, and I do think unfortunately is the right word, the boxes that, that um, go up during broadcasts are an approximation. Um, they are not the same as the system that we use to actually evaluate our umpires, and they do get every pitch after every game as to whether they missed it or didn't miss it. The difference between the two systems is the box that goes up on a broadcast is a standard box. In our system, a technician goes in and manually sets the strike zone to fit the dimensions of the hitter, which obviously varies significantly. Until that problem is solved so it can be automated, done very quickly in order to move the pace of the game along. I don't think you can call balls and strikes um, on an automated basis. So you're not against it philosophically. It's more technology-based. No. 
Yeah, it's, it's whether we can do it right now is really the answer, and not against it as a, as a philosophical matter. I think that um, the use of technology in instant replay has been um, – a real positive for the game in terms of making sure that we get important calls right and being responsive to what our fans want. Good to, good to uh, check in with you. Thank you, Commissioner, for spending uh, time. Oh, Dan, always my pleasure, and I'll talk to you soon, All okay? Right. That's Rob Manfred. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner of Major League Baseball.